Hi guys! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make my stained glass fairy. There are two options for this fairy design. You can make this hanging fairy or you can make a flat fairy to put up on a window. The hanging fairy is essentially two flat fairies attached together so I'm going to show you how to make the window fairy and then we'll continue on to create a hanging fairy. This is a great craft if you're looking for an activity to offer at a birthday party. It's easy to do and if the children are really young then chances are they'll have a parent with them so you can have the parents help out. And it doubles as your party favor because they get to take it home with them. As I said, the hanging fairy is made up of two fairies, so if you're looking for a simpler birthday craft, go with the window fairy and then everyone will just make one fairy each. Okay, so first let's look at what you'll see in your downloaded file. Here are the fairy parts. There's one complete fairy, one wing, and these are the stained glass cutouts. If you're using Design Space and this fold line is showing up as a solid line, you'll need to change it back to a dotted line. Most of you probably already know how to do this, so just skip over this part. To change the line back to a dotted line, first thing you'll need to do is to click anywhere on the ferry and you'll see that all the pieces are grouped together. But we want to be able to select the fold line by itself, so go up here and choose Ungroup. Now you should be able to click on this line by itself. Sometimes you need to ungroup more than once to isolate an object, depending on how the file was created. For this fairy, you should only have to do it once. Now click on the fold line, then go up to this menu and change it from basic to score. Now that fold line should be a dotted line like this. And before you cut, remember to click on both the line and the ferry and go down here and click on attach to make sure they don't get separated. Once you've followed these steps, you should be ready to cut. So let's move on to creating our ferry. Here are the materials I'll be using. These are double-sided tape tabs that you can use to adhere your ferry to your window. So if you're making the hanging ferry, you won't need this. Instead, you'll be using this double-sided tape. Now let's look at our fairy cutouts. Here are the pieces you will need to cut if you're making a hanging fairy. These are the parts I just showed you if you were to cut exactly what's in your download. And this would be enough to create one window fairy. But if you're making a hanging fairy, you'll need to cut an extra fairy and a fairy wing. Like I said before, the steps for making the window fairy and the hanging fairy are the same for the first part. So to start, we will be using these cutouts to trace out our stained glass pieces. You can use any translucent paper for this part. I'm going to use cellophane or acetate and this is the fairy we'll be creating. As you can see, this fairy's wing has a different look and that is because this one was made with tissue paper. I used a method which does not require you to trace out and cut the tissue paper. It's actually quite a fun and easy process and I've made a separate video showing you how to do this. You'll find the link for this video in the description below. For this tutorial, I'm going to use cellophane, which I purchased on Amazon and it comes in a multicolored pack like this. This is the same material that's used for wrapping gift baskets, so you can also find it in large rolls. But it's nice to have it in these small squares in multiple colors. And these are the five colors I'll be using. And something to keep in mind for cellophane, there are two different sides to each sheet. On one side, you can actually scratch off the color, so just be aware of that. I find this side a little harder to write on, but it doesn't really matter for this project. These shapes we'll be tracing out do not have to be perfect because the edges will not show. So when you're tracing, just a rough trace is fine. So here I'm going to trace my first shape, and I'm using a black pilot marker. If you're making the window fairy, you'll only need to trace one of each shape. But if you're making a hanging fairy, you'll need two of each shape. And when you've traced your shapes, cut them out.
Here are my shapes cut out along with my fairy. And again, if you're making a hanging fairy, you will need double of everything you see here. If you're planning this for a birthday party craft, it's probably easiest to have all the shapes cut out and ready for your guests to glue on. And you can organize the shapes into separate containers so that no one is having to search for all the shapes they need. I've designed these shapes so that each one is pretty distinguishable from the next, so determining where they go should be pretty easy. I should add here that cellophane can be cut with your machine. Just make sure you have the side where the color can be scratched off facing up on your mat. Otherwise, the color will come off on your mat. Since I did multiple colors, I just find it easier to cut by hand. Cellophane and acetate are very similar, but cellophane is quite a lot thinner. So if your machine has an acetate setting, that might be too much pressure for cellophane. So just be aware of that when you're cutting on your machine. After your shapes are cut, we will glue them onto the fairy wing. So you're just going to circle each shape in your fairy with some glue. You only need a little bit of glue here, too much and the glue will seep out. And now place your cellophane piece on top. I'm using a tweezy here, but it's really not necessary. Here I'm moving to the bottom of my fairy wing just to give that first piece a little bit of time to dry and settle. And just repeat this for all your shapes. Once all your shapes are glued on, we are going to cover them with our wing piece to hide those edges. So cover your wing piece with some glue. Make sure you're working with the correct side because remember you'll be flipping this over to attach it to the fairy. And once it's covered in glue, attach it to the fairy and make sure it's nice and aligned with the bottom wing. One note here, you may be tempted to line up the wing with the fold line, but don't do this because I've made the wing a little shorter on this end to make sure it doesn't overlap with this fold line. So use the other edges of the wing for aligning. Also, don't worry about dried glue on your fairy. You can scratch this off with an X-Acto knife. And if you get any glue or marker on the cellophane, that can also easily be rubbed off with a damp paper towel. And now your window fairy is done. For adhering to your window, I use these scotch tabs, which I'll link below. They come in different pre-cut sizes. I like to get the one inch pieces and then just cut to the size you need. This piece here is half of a one inch tab. And you just remove the liner and then stick it to your window. And there's your stained glass window fairy. Now let's continue to create the hanging fairy. When you've glued on your shapes to the first fairy, take your second fairy and flip it over so it's facing the opposite direction of your first fairy. And then glue the shapes onto the wing just as with the first fairy. And when the shapes are all glued on, we are also going to cover this fairy wing with the second wing piece. Now we have our two fairies and we will be attaching them so that these wing seams will face each other like this so they'll be hidden. To begin the next step, take one fairy and whether you work with the fairy's head facing left or right, just make sure that the fairy's wing seam is facing you. Then cut a piece of double-sided tape that's about the same length as that wing fold line. And now place your tape along the fold line. 
and make sure it's on the fold line and not butt it up to that wing seam because remember that seam sits a little higher than the fold line. This piece of tape will hold the two fairies together, but to attach the other parts of the fairy, the head, arms, and legs, you can either use more double-sided tape or glue. I'm going to be using glue for my fairy. If you're using tape, now is the time to attach your tape to the other parts of the fairy. Next, take your second fairy and align it on top of the first. Once you have them aligned, hold down one end of the fairy tightly, then peel open the top fairy to reveal the tape at the wings and remove that liner. Then press your top fairy down. If you're using tape to attach the rest of the fairy, now you can just remove the liners on all the other pieces and attach the rest of your fairy parts. But let me show you how to glue them together. If you're not particular about having every millimeter of the fairy parts glued together, then you can just apply your glue straight from the bottle to the fairy, but I'm going to apply my glue with a small brush, so I'm dispensing my glue into a small bowl. Then with your brush, starting at the fairy skirt, just spread your glue all over the inner surface. I like to work in parts here so it's a little easier to make sure everything is aligned. So here I first glue the skirt, then the legs. And then I move on to the head, and then finally the arms. If you're using regular white glue, it's a little more watery than this tacky glue that I'm using, so you may have to go back and make sure all the areas stay glued together. Regular white glue tends to not thoroughly stick right away, whereas this tacky glue is much better if you want immediate adhesion. Once your fairy is completely glued together, all you need to do is tie some string for hanging. Take your string, I'm using clear monofilament, and loop it through the flower cutout in her hair. And I just want to pause here a bit to talk about this hanging hole. If you've made any of my other hanging fairies, you may be wondering why I'm hanging this fairy from her head and not from a notch at her wings like my other fairies. And the reason for that is because of the double layered wings on this fairy and the added stained glass cutouts, it's hard to gauge what weight everyone's fairy will have. Some people will choose not to cover the wings with the second wing and that would change the weight. So a hanging notch at the wings wouldn't work because any change in the fairy's wings will affect how she hangs. This way, hanging her from her head avoids all those potential issues. And going back to our string, now just tie a few knots. I like to create a loop with my finger to add some space between the string and the paper. If you do this, you'll need to pull on all four strings coming out of your knot. And for a monofilament, I find three knots is more secure than two. And that's it, your fairy is ready for hanging. And of course the best place to hang this fairy is somewhere where sunlight will hit it so you can get that stained glass effect. Thanks for following along with this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this one.